Across the other side of the set, though, Alison Sargent back in the studio with a look at what's making uh, papers. Alison, starting in Bangladesh this time, and papers are really mourning the victim of uh, yesterday's deadly fire. That's right. Dozens were killed in that fire that broke out at a bazaar in the capital of Dhaka. Um, devastating images on many of the Bangladeshi front pages today. If you, this paper is asking in one of its headlines, where are we going to put so many bodies? Another local paper headlines, tragedy repeats itself in old Dhaka. Um, that's a reference to a fire that took place there in 2010 that killed more than 120 people. Um, that fire was caused when an electrical transformer exploded, setting fire to chemicals that were being illegally stored in a residential building. And that scenario sounds incredibly similar to what caused this latest fire. That's right. Another local paper, The Daily Star, um, notes in their editorial today that the source of this fire is believed also to have been a chemical warehouse. Uh, the paper notes that just two days before the fire, they themselves actually published an editorial about um, the hundreds of chemical warehouses that continue to operate in old Dhaka. They call this a blatant disregard for human life. The headline of that editorial there is asking who bears responsibility responsibility for these, for these deaths. deaths. Um, and their answer, as well as the answer of the New York Times, is that the local government does for not enforcing laws um, against storing chemicals in residential buildings. Uh, the New York Times spoke to a local architect who said, this isn't about poverty, it's about greed. He says many of the people storing these chemicals in these buildings are rich company owners. And according to him, the government in Dhaka needs to knock on doors and tell businesses to get out and get lost. And moving over to Algeria now, where protests continue against the decision of President Abdelaziz Bouteflika to run for a fifth term. Right. These protests are on the front page of pan-Arab paper Al Arab today. They've been going on for several weeks now, and the paper writes that they're really becoming a big threat for Bouteflika. Um, the government has been warning of the danger of Algeria falling into chaos and getting taken over by Islamist militants because of these protests. Um, but the paper rejects these arguments really as a scare tactic from the government to keep Bouteflika in power. Um, he is, Bouteflika has already ruled the country for two decades, but because of his age, he's 81, and his declining health, well, he's been pretty absent from the public sphere. Um, that's, as you can see in this cartoon from Algerian paper El Watan, we see Bouteflika's empty wheelchair being blocked from moving forward by these protests. Um, another cartoon from the paper Liberté Algérie shows a protester shouting no to a fifth term at Bouteflika's empty portrait, another symbol of the president's absence. Well, moving from the Algerian president to the French president, Emmanuel Macron is set to visit the agricultural fair that kicks off this week in an annual tradition here in France. That's right. An annual tradition full of good food and cute farm animals and also a lot of politics. <laughs> We're going to get to that in a second. Um, for the occasion, Le Figaro is taking a look at France's agricultural sector today. According to a poll conducted for the paper, 85% of French people have a positive image of farmers. Um, and farmers could really use more support from society. The paper writes that the sector is really struggling. We know they have a very high suicide rate. Um, and as of several years ago, a third of farmers were living on less than 360 euros a month, which is really not a lot. Um, the French president always makes an appearance at the opening of the agricultural fair. Um, for Macron, that's going to be this Saturday. Le Figaro writes that this is going to be quite a tricky appearance for him in the current climate of yellow vest anger. Um, but it's also an important appearance for Macron because he's going to be trying to win back the French population. Last year, he was booed by many in the crowd, but he still stayed there for 12 hours. So we'll have to see how long he lasts this year. All right, well, moving to another story about an animal, but not one that's domesticated. Paleontologists have discovered a new ancestor of the T-Rex dinosaur. That's right, and this one is also being dubbed a T-Rex, but the T does not stand for Tyrannosaurus. It stands for <laughs> Tiny, the Tiny Rex, or the Teacup <laughs> Rex, as Quartz is calling it. Um, it would have stood about four feet tall, a little over a meter, which is about the size of a deer. Um, it was discovered by paleontologists in the U.S. state of Utah. Um, they named it Moros Intrepidus, which means harbinger of doom, that doom being the T-Rex that it eventually evolved into. And it has a purple mohawk there, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last story from you, Allison. Uh, Nintendo of America has named a new president, and he's getting a lot of attention on the internet due to his name. That's right, and it's a name that you could say makes him a perfect candidate for the job. His name is Doug Bowser. Um, this is really a story for the video game nerds out there. If you don't know who Bowser is, well, you can look at this photo from Business Insider. That's him. Um, he's the iconic villain of the Super Mario universe, sort of a cross between a turtle and a dragon. Um, a bit bigger than a mini T-Rex as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely, definitely could take on a mini, a mini T-Rex. 
T-Rex. Um, fans first noticed Doug Bowser's name when he was um, named the vice president of sales in 2015. Now that he's been promoted, a fresh wave of memes has flooded the internet. Um, and I can't imagine that he would make quite an intimidating boss if he's anything like this Bowser. Yeah, imagine negotiating a pay raise with him. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Allison. Allison Sargent with a roundup of what's making headlines there. Stay tuned. We'll have more news and headlines coming up after the break.